Just like everything else, 3D printing has a learning curve. Something that I learned over the eight months of running my X1C is that while printing PLA, and more specifically, PLA silk, I get much better results if I vent my chamber. So what I mean by venting the chamber, this is a fully enclosed 3D printer. So I wanna let that heat escape just a little bit so I can either open the door, something like that, or I can open this lid and find a way to prop that open. That would work for most circumstances, but it won't work for my setup, and let me show you why. So this right here is my hobby corner. This is downstairs in the basement. So that means that my family and myself live in this environment. So anything that I'm doing down here, painting, epoxy, 3D printing, running the laser, I wanna make sure that everything is as safe as possible for my family's well-being. Any of these hobbies that I'm doing, I'm choosing to do them, so I understand the risks that are involved, but they didn't sign up for that, they're not part of that, so I wanna keep them safe. Over here, I have my laser cutter, and I have a duct that is ran outside, and that just blows any of that smoke and those fumes outdoors where they can't harm anybody. So these 3D printers, they're printing plastic, they're printing rubber, and other materials that can release toxins into the air. The back of this X1C here has a small square activated carbon filter that when this chamber wants to vent itself, it'll blow exhaust air through that activated carbon and out of the back of your printer. And then you can know that that air is scrubbed and clean and nobody's gonna be breathing anything real bad. So if I wanna vent this thing while I'm printing my PLA or my PLA silk and I prop the front or I prop the door, you can see we're gonna let out a lot of unfiltered air. I don't want that unfiltered air going into the, the house, going into the basement and everybody breathing it. So I installed this inline filter. This is basically just a filter that you would use in a grow tent, just helps scrub and clean the air. It consists of a carbon filter here. This is actually quite a bit of carbon in here, so this thing will stay good for quite a while. And then it just has this blower here, and what it'll do, it'll suck it in through this carbon and blow it out here, and then I can know that that air is clean and it's safe for everybody to breathe. So in this video, my plan is to make a new top for this enclosure that has a vent in it with either a screw cap or maybe even just like a friction fit cap that I can then take off when I wanna print with the PLA or the PLA soak. And I know that that now unfiltered air that's leaving this chamber is gonna go up into this filter, get filtered, actually better than the chamber itself, and then blown into the environment where it is not harmful for anybody living. So the perfect material to mimic that glass is this. This is a quarter inch piece of cast acrylic. Cast acrylic is much better and easier to machine and leaves you with a better result than extruded acrylic. Your extruded acrylic is what you're gonna find at the big box store. So I actually ordered this online. This is 16 inches by 16 inches, again, quarter inch. And this cost me about 25 bucks. So it's really not that bad for what we're trying to accomplish here. The reason why this has this paper masking on here, I love it for two reasons. Number one, they will send this to you and you know that this is not gonna be scratched, it's not gonna be scuffed or anything because you can see that the paper on there is protecting it. And if there is any real big gouges in there or whatever, you'll be able to see it. Then you can decide if you want to contact the manufacturer or if it's gonna be on a part that you're not gonna see or you're gonna cut off, you can just live with it. And number two, because this has this masking on here, you can just put your CA glue right on here and then glue it down to your sacrificial waste board and you don't have to waste the time or the tape covering this whole thing up. Now the reason why you want to use the tape and CA glue method to hold this down to a sacrificial waste board is you want this whole thing to be secured to that waste board so there is no movement whatsoever. Putting you know, four or maybe even eight or six clamps on here is not gonna do good enough a job, especially in the middle. The bit that we're gonna be using is an O-flute upcut bit. And what that means is it's gonna have one or maybe even only half of a spiral in that bit so that when it is cutting this acrylic, it is evacuating those chips very quickly. You don't wanna get those chips in there and keep them in there because now the next pass you do, those chips, because they're so small, they're gonna heat up, they're gonna become gummy, they're gonna to stick to the side of this acrylic or your bit, 
and it's gonna leave you with a terrible finish. Also, because that's an upcut Oflu bit, it's gonna want to pull this off of that waste board. And once it does that, and you get any kind of movement in here, it's gonna introduce what is called chatter. So chatter is just basically vibrations. So this thing is gonna vibrate. You might not be able to see it, but you'll definitely be able to hear it. And or it's gonna make your bit vibrate the same way, and you're gonna be left with a pretty terrible cut. You'll be able to see all those slight little gouges in there because every time it's vibrating, it's contacting this a little bit more and then it's moving away in a little bit less and a little bit more. And you're gonna definitely be able to tell that this was not cut with the right machine. So we need to glue this fully down, 100% coverage, at least in the cutting area on both sides of where you think the bit's gonna be. And then that will leave you with the absolute best results while cutting this cast acrylic. Now you can cut this acrylic two different ways. One way, you take some smaller blocks and you would set your glass face down just like that. Put a little bit of painter's tape or masking tape right down in there in the middle. Throw a little CA glue on there and then set your piece of acrylic on there. Let that fully dry. Then you can take your router with a flush trim bit and a bearing and then this would just run around your glass top basically using the glass top as a template and then you'll get an exact one-to-one -one replica of the size of this glass top in your cast acrylic. Now I'm going to use the CNC here to machine this. I've already gotten the dimensions of that glass top. I think I've got it pretty close and then I did add a little drawing down there for where I want my vent to be and then four bolt holes so that way I can bolt that vent to this piece of acrylic. So I'm going to find that sacrificial waste board. I'm gonna glue this down, get it all secured. And then once I get it on the CNC over here, I'll bring it back and I'll show you what I got and what we're about to do. Here we are in V-Carve. I got this all mocked up. You can see there is the basic outline of the glass. Then that rectangle in the middle, that's gonna be a cutout for where that vent's gonna sit. And then just five through holes with four of those containing a shallow pocket to fit that hex head of that bolt. There she is, all glued up, ready to go. I've got center marked, got her clamped down to the CNC, and I've got that O-flute in there. So let's get to cutting, see what we got. Jog her over there, hit my XYZ zero. Once I get all that ready to go, load the file up, hit start, and start cutting away. So the first tool path here is with this quarter inch O-flute. It's going to do five through bolt holes. That's just gonna basically allow the clearance for the shaft of those bolts to go through this acrylic. Now I'm gonna switch over to an eighth inch end mill. I don't have an O-flute, but basically this eighth inch end mill is going to recess the slight pockets in here that will be a hexagon shape to accept the bolt heads. I don't have an O-flute, but I wanted to use an eighth inch just to give myself a little bit more detail and some crisper corners for those bolt heads. Now, time to do a test. Let's make sure the bolt head fits in that recess. Should be pretty tight. There we go, everything fits. Let's get on to cutting the rest of this thing. So I've switched back to the quarter inch O-flute. Each one of these passes, it's gonna be four passes. It's gonna be three passes on one tool path. And you'll see it'll leave just a little bit of that acrylic in there. And then I will come back through with a final pass and it'll clear all of that out of there. So this is the third pass. You can see this makes quite a mess. And when it gets to that back right corner, it's gonna lift up and come back down. And now you can see it's evacuating all those chips. Everything's out of there. We are perfectly clean. So this is right off the CNC. I'm dying to pull this off, but I wanted to show you the kind of results we got by setting this up correctly while doing the, the full takedown and gluing with the CA glue of this paper mask cast acrylic. You can see the bolts sitting there perfectly. Uh, once this is actually flat, you'll get a much better view of that. But you can see there's no acrylic gunk in here. There's no of that re-gluing of those heated up shards of acrylic those all got evacuated you saw them flying around the cnc machine there but that's what you want you want those chips out of there you want them gone 
And if it makes a mess of your CNC, well, so be it. If you want perfect results like this, that's just something you gotta live with. So I'm gonna set this down, I'll probably move the camera, and then I'm just gonna peel this off, and I'm gonna see what we got. I anticipate the paper masking that's on the back side of this to actually stay on my sacrificial board because I do have that painter's tape and CA glue. But I, who knows, it might come off clean, I don't know. But I'm gonna peel that off, I'm gonna get any of this cleaned up, I'm gonna make sure the bolt holes work, and then we'll be able to bolt the vent on here, put the handle on here, set it on the 3D printer, and see how it works. So I'm just gonna use a spatula just like this. I'm gonna get under these corners, kinda go slow with this, kinda walk it around. This outer piece here, this is just garbage. So if this breaks, not a big deal. You just wanna make sure you don't cut your hands. This stuff is sharp, it will break. There we go. Now it's onto the piece we want to keep. So I want to get under a corner and I don't want to end up scraping or scratching any of this acrylic. So I want to try to get this off as, as easily as possible. I don't want to use a lot of force if I don't have to. But I think if I can get under the corner, kind of keep some pressure on that, kind of walk it around. go that's perfect I know it's a really tough shot you can't see it a little bit of a little bit of glass clean will take that off but that's exactly what we want we got our vent there we got all of our bolt holes there those fit in there perfect and then that's actually gonna be the bottom so now that bolts gonna stick up like that I can put my vent on there and we'll be good to go I'm really excited about this so I'm gonna bring this back down to the workshop down there in the basement and let's build this thing. So this is what I drew up in Fusion. This is a very simple design and I just used the loft feature. I drew a rectangle on the bottom, the dimensions that I wanted, and then I just lofted it up to a circle on the top and it does all the rest of that for you. I added a little flange there on the bottom with my bolt holes and I think this is gonna be perfect for what I'm trying to accomplish. So this is just a really simple knob that I mocked up in Fusion. I think it's gonna fit good in the hand and it's gonna be just the right size for this glass top. I'm gonna to actually insert a quarter inch rod coupling in there, put a pause in Bamboo Studio. Speaking of, here we go. This is Bamboo Studio. I like the way this looks. So I'm gonna hit play, send this over to the printer and watch it print. I always love watching these time-lapse prints, especially when it gets to a section like this where the printer head doesn't really seem to move, but the print just keeps on going. And now over to this knob. When I did, I did the variable height in the slicer so that way the layer lines are very, very minor and very, very smooth on the top. I will insert my rod coupling. There it was, it was kind of hard to see. And now I've got a really nice smooth knob for your hand. Got all my pieces here laid out on this towel just to kind of keep the acrylic uh, scratch free from when I'm trying to tighten all these bolts and all that stuff on. But I just have four bolts, four locking nuts, and then I have, I take it back, I got five because I have one longer bolt for the knob that I'm going to put there in the front. So I am good to go. Um, I'm just going to put these bolts in here and bolt this thing up. I've got a socket and an open end wrench. I don't know which one's gonna work better for me, but I'm just gonna shove all of these bolts in here and get this thing ready to go. I could have been slick, I guess, and printed like a TPU gasket. I've got some of that Soraya Tech, it's like an 85A. It's super flexible. I, I could have printed a gasket, I guess, out of that, 
just to seal up between this vent and this plastic, but it's not that critical. That would have just been me like playing games. Well, what's nice is because these bolt heads are sticking down there. Uh, and what's nice is because these bolt heads stick through that acrylic, that actually acts as like a holdback. So you only need the one wrench to tighten these up. So that, that's pretty slick there. The front ones will be a lot easier because I can just use that socket. But this isn't too bad. It doesn't have to go that far. And because I'm using lock nuts here, this won't come loose over time. So I can just run this, snug it up, get it pretty close to how I want it, and then it's gonna stay just like, like that, and that won't loosen up no matter how much you're, you know, moving this on and off. I don't anticipate me taking this off very often, if even at all. But in case I do, that is nice to know that this vent's gonna stay on there and I don't have to worry about it going anywhere. Yeah, that's nice, socket fits nice. Got plenty of clearance. Snug that up. Snug up this side. There we go. Don't want to over snug these because it is just acrylic, but that vent is on there. Here's a nice shot of the back there. You can see everything lined up with that hole and then the actual perimeter and the drawing of this vent. This is uh, absolutely perfect. This is printing out. This is turning out exactly how I want it. Now, because you could see in the 3D printer uh, time lapse there, I put a, this is a quarter inch rod coupling probably about an inch long whoops so i set that in there so when i was printing this i don't know if you caught it there on the time lapse but i have a one inch long quarter inch rod coupling in here and basically that's just a super long nut but it's not real big so i have that embedded in there so now my bolt will just tighten into that and then you're good to go there you don't have to have another nut or do anything like that so i will actually be able to put a hold back on this and then just tighten this knob as tightly as I want it, and it should stay. If I do notice that it is starting to back out, which again, I don't anticipate it to, could always put either a little bit of super glue on some of these threads, or I could print what I was saying, like a TPU, little gasket, little washer to go under there, and just that little bit of extra friction in there will stop this from coming apart. Okay, there we go. Knobs on there, vents on there. The thing looks great. Got my cap that I can go on there when I want to print something higher like the PET-G or any other filament there for that matter. Now let's get over the 3D printer and see if it works. I've got the original top glass taken off. Here is my replacement, let's see how it fits. There we go, fits on there perfect. I think it looks great. And then I've got the vent, I got the cap right there. I might end up reprinting this with some external threads here and then some internal threads here. That way I could just screw this on if I wanted to, but you can see when I remove that, all that unfiltered air will exhaust up into here. Heat rises, it'll go into this filter here, get filtered and then blown around. I love the way this looks. Everything works perfect. There we go. So you can see how absolutely crisp this edge is here. And that's because we used that OFU bit and we made sure that our acrylic was tight down to the CNC so it didn't pull up and introduce any of that chatter. But there we go, we've got our new top there and then the add-on pieces there match the side spool there. So got a little theme going there with that orange. There we go, everything works well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and until next time, Take it easy.